Let's start off by grabbing some pipe clamps. We're gonna need these for building our doors. I'm supposed to be having a visitor stop on over later on. Let's get some measurements so we can figure out how to stop making our doors. All right, so we have 37 and a half. So if we make this door right from the beginning, at least say 39. And then let's go height. Um, seven feet. Make the height of it seven feet and then we'll cut it down to fit after. So I bought enough shiplap boards when we were siding the outside to do the doors. And I think we're gonna have, I hope we're gonna have just enough to make the three doors we need to make. The first one is always the fun one. All right, so I'm figuring it's gonna take two boards to build each door. We picked everything up in here so we can work on the floor and build the doors. It was getting pretty messy in here. So how long is the board? It's supposed to be 14. It is just over. An outside one and then this one as an outside one so this way we can rip down and rip off that knot material I like this part right here for another door panel Be 14 right to here. Okay, so we know that. Let's go seven feet. Eight, oops, that's six feet. We want seven feet, 84 inches. <clears throat> Here we have some more boards. How tall is this one? It's not quite eight feet. No, 80. Yeah, it would work, I think. I do believe so. And this is gonna be our top and our bottom. All right, let's rip this down to nine and three quarters for the first pass. Oops. Let's put a five degree bevel on it. Okay. I'll explain the reason for the five degree bevel as we're building the door. I want to take off the shiplap edge the dado. So let's go down to nine inch. And again, we're going to do a five degree bevel. We can cut this down.
All right, so then that's going to go like so. And like so. I'm going to need one that is at least boop, boop, ba -doo. at least 77 inches. Right. Again, I want a five degree bevel. One end nice and flush. Oh, I like that a lot. I might go and grab one more clamp. Let's throw one more clamp in the center. Nice and tight, flush. All right, there we go. I picked up some inch and a quarter number eight screws, and I should have my wood glue right here. Then I want me drill. Electric going to be coming in? 
Yeah, so we ran electrical conduit down from our house down to here. And we chose to hook it up to our house because we thought about putting it on our own meter. But if we put it on our own meter, we're going to have a $20 a month service charge just for reading our meter. So even if we only use $10 worth of electricity down here, we're still going to pay a $20 meter fee. Well, how far are we from the house? We are 280 feet from the conduit line. So you've already measured it out? To, to the Yesterday we had the electrician come and he blew the rope through and we measured it so we've got, we've got the electrical wire on order. And uh, you mentioned you're going to run 100 amps down here. We're going to put a 100 amp panel right here. The electrician's going to stall that. And I'm going to have to put three outlets in down here. And then later on I'll wire up the shop ourselves. That's great. That pipe's coming in right on the other side of this wall. Yep, it's going to come right in. He's actually going to run it up the outside so we don't have to go through the sill plate and run it right into the back of the panel. Yeah, that'll be a full-size panel. Yep. Yeah, that's great. We're going to put internet down here, so if we want to do live videos or live streaming down here, we You're can. You're going to set up a work uh, space with both uh, for construction, but also a, like a, a computer station. We're going to have, a, yep, so we have our computer down here. We'll have our workshop set up, so we can do a little bit of everything. Almost be like our workshop YouTube studio. So it'll be like a true man cave. Yes. <laughs> and then we'll have our animal stalls on the other side. And uh, you're going to think about insulation too? Yeah, I'm thinking about doing spray foam insulation. And what I was thinking is I'll take some wood strips that are two inches thick and I'll border all the four by four posts and two bys. And then we'll spray two inches of foam in and then I can put boards over it. Uh, those two inch uh, will act as backing and that's what you'll nail to. That's what I'll nail our boards to. And then we'll still, so if we have three quarter inch thick boards, we'll have an inch and a quarter of our post and beam still revealed. So we'll still have the post and beam look while it's insulated. I really like spray foam. It, it really seals the building up tight and acts as a vapor barrier. So you don't have to put that vapor barrier in. Yep. Uh, so that'll close it up, seal it up tight. And it turns it into a cave. It's a much different feel when the spray foam has been finished. So what I was thinking with having the loft right here, this is where I'll put our workbenches. You're going to put the workbenches against the gable end? I'll put the workbench on the gable end on the sides too, and then we can mount our shop lights right here so we'll have really good bright light. Yeah, and some light LEDs or something? Yep. Oh, that would be great. This is a great space. Gives you plenty of room. Yep. you got that 16 feet, so you still need you got a lot of room in here to work, but you got 16 foot lumber or 14 foot, you don't have to worry about working in a small area. And then you'll have a little uh, computer station too, I think. Yeah, the computer station will either be over here, or we'll put it back there on the corner. Yeah, uh, you'll, you have a floor plan drawn up? Not yet, just in my head. i got to sketch it up and get it out on paper and figure it out better. Uh, everybody back at home, yeah, go ahead and put those floor plans together and send us over those to designers and we'll take it from there. Even if it's just on a napkin, it'd be great. Do you plan on cutting out the silk plate or are you going to uh, leave it as a threshold? Nope, I'm going to cut out the 6x6 six six silk plate. I'll leave the 2x6 like we did for that door over there. Makes it a lot easier to walk through. Absolutely. And it's a matter of preference. The door height here, that rough opening, will fit either way. So if you do cut out the sill plate, you can pad that down. And it'll fit out nice to fit that 6 8 opening. Works out nice that way. It gives you the option either way. Yeah. So this space right now is going to be for hay storage. And we'll, we'll park the Kubota tractor. And then later on, we want to add more animals to the farm. We'll turn this more into animal stalls afterwards. And can you leave your roll bar up and be able to clear this? No, but my roll bar fall, folds down really easy. So we yeah, can just drop a little the... reminder, huh? Yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yeah, Al, the, the, the building came out great. You know, you can always tell when you walk up to the building what, how it went because of the, how straight it is. <laughs> yeah, how plumb and level it is. That's correct. And yours is spot on. Yeah, I think a lot of that starts with making sure whether you have a concrete slab or gravel slab that that's level. You start level, you end level. Yeah, the concrete piers are the most difficult to, to get from and, and level. The, uh, I did notice that you cut your apple tree back there. I did trim the apple tree. <laughs> that kind of got in our way a little bit. <laughs> it does look great. I, I can see the apples are plentiful this year. They're, they're stuck to drop. It's amazing how many apples we have on the trees right now. Yep. And your concrete slab, uh, how thick did you pour that? So our concrete slab in the center is 6 inches thick. Wow. And all on the outside, it's 12 inches wide and 12 inches deep for a footing. So a nice Alaskan floating slab there. And, yep. And you, you took it, to, usually we only do 3 inches in the center, but you chose to go 6 inches. Yeah, I wanted to go a little bit thicker so that way we'd make sure no matter what we did inside, if we wanted to put a lift maybe one day or, we to, or driving a bigger piece of equipment in there, we didn't have to worry about how heavy duty it was. And did you put any uh, steel in, in the slab? I did. We had some cattle panel kicking around the homestead that we weren't using. So if we have cattle panel in the center slab and then the two eave overhang slabs, we put the remesh in. 
Okay, so you got the mesh on the, the overhang side, yep. and then in the middle you put in the cow, what? Cattle panel? Oh, the so cattle panel. It's like quarter inch steel fencing. So it's a little bit heavier dutier than in between, I guess, the remesh and then rebar. And I've seen uh, people put in car parts. I've seen any kind of steel, scrap metal. Whatever going. you have kicking around for steel, right? <laughs> that would work good. Steel's not cheap nowadays. No, no, it isn't. We ended up pouring our slabs in two different sections, and the reason we did that is the center building is 16 feet wide, and then our whole building is 32 by 30. I didn't want to try pouring a 32 foot wide slab by myself without having all the proper equipment that a builder would have. So we broke it up to 16 feet uh, in my head thinking that's more manageable for two people to do by themselves. And I wanted to make sure we had the footings under our six by six post for the building. So if we did the center slab together, we could do all the footings in one pour, and then we could do our eave overhangs, and they were a lot more manageable for two people. Gravel is a great choice, so even if you're going to use a concrete foundation, piers, or slab, you still got to pour it, you got to still bring in that gravel. And, oh yeah. And if you can compact it, if you have that ability to do that, it just makes that so much more easier to work with uh, in the future to keep it from settling. Yeah, less settling. They also have, and I'm sure if a lot of people, you could probably rent them a lot easier. We, we were lucky and we had a big roller, like a street roller they do for paving, but you can rent probably a plate compactor. A lot of rental places yeah, have that. Little, little, yeah. And I am amazed how much that compacts the dirt. Like we had one and we did a few spots, the, the contractor left, he didn't have time to do it. I compacted the gravel and then it rained that night. Well, if it was, when it was compacted, it was like concrete and it didn't get washed out where the spots we didn't have a chance to compact it, it got washed out right away. Now this looks like it's a, a combination of crushed uh, bank run gravel. Yeah, yep. So Local, it looks like three quarter inch. Yep. Yeah. Pretty sandy, which is nice, so it helps it pack down better. The bank run gravel is always a, a very affordable choice. Uh, we always prefer a crushed gravel over a screened uh, pea gravel. Well, I got you here, Dom. I wanted to ask you a few common questions I keep seeing popping up in the comments from our viewers. So the big one I keep seeing is about our flashing for the two roofs, that it came silver and not green. Now we often flash out any time where the roof meets uh, the dormer or like here's with the transition. Yep. I, we use that aluminum flashing where we buy it in huge rolls. So it's always the same. We have a limited amount of space. But if you do want to go ahead and make that the same color as the roofing, that's just an added option. You just speak to one of the designers and we can make that happen. So it's just an upgrade if we want it. Yeah, that's correct. Perfect. The other one I get all constantly is why do we? Why is the barn built on six by six posts? With the four by four upright uh the pressure treated six by six yes. silt plate that's a great question the six by six those big uh, silt plates that we have down at the bottom of yep. the building that's a structural thing so depending on what your foundation is going to be whether that be concrete piers or a gravel base that is to, to support the building from sagging in the future so you're you're putting more weight and spreading it out over the whole 30 feet or however long the building is and not just down on one say four by four post that is very correct and so if the way you chose to do it is a concrete slab it's not the most affordable but off but it's also the best way to do it right <laughs> definitely if you wanted to do this you could just do it right on a gravel pad without the concrete just gravel like this is fine uh, we always recommend like a sure pack or a crushed stone okay let's see what else we've been having a lot of people been asking about are the hardware does the kit come with the hardware and it does the kit comes with hand nails we've been supplementing with a lot of screws structural screws and nail gun nails i did notice that now using the screws is great because if you want to back up it's very easy to, to remove them yeah. uh, but the screws there is it's a matter of preference uh, so a carpenter a very old school doesn't even use a nail gun he likes to use his hand yep. so it's just a matter of preference if you like to use screws that's great but the, the kit does include all of the hand nails the other question we get quite a bit is why we chose to going with jamaica cottage shop versus building it ourselves or a different building we chose to make a cottage shop because it looks pretty, guys. I mean, come on. If we put a steel building down here, it wouldn't fit our homestead. So we went with a post and beam look. We have a really short building season here. So by purchasing the kit from Jamaica Cottage Shop, everything comes pre-cut and it saves, I'm gonna say it probably cut my time down by half so we could get it built being by ourselves. And cost-wise, it costs almost the same amount of money to buy the kit pre-cut as it would have if I would have went out and bought all the lumber. And it was free shipping. And it was free shipping. It was <laughs> delivered right here. 
which made it perfect. Now you can go to the website and download a free set of plans right now. Yep. Uh, that'll help you get through any kind of zoning or building or, or maybe if you need to uh, get the other party on board, your other family members or such. Uh, the other thing is, is aesthetics and understanding the structural space, the aesthetic space that you'll receive. So, like understanding the different wall heights, uh, being able to take a look at that. And uh, when you're building from scratch, you're guessing at wall heights and roof. Pitches. Right, you got to figure out your own wall height. You got to figure out your roof pitch if you want to go. Yeah, how wide you want to go. What the roof? Pitch. There's a lot to figure if you're going to be doing it yourself. And then. I kind of, we get a bunch of, why don't you get a sawmill? Why don't you mill it all yourself? That's a huge expense. It really is. I mean, a cheap sawmill is five grand, and it's not a very nice one. Then you've got to have a big piece of equipment to move your logs around to load your sawmill. So, I mean, it's a lot, a lot more cost effective to go out and buy a kit than it is to buy a sawmill and do all the milling yourself. That is true, but you don't understand that until you go through the process. Right. Al, you mentioned about the different wall heights and the roof pitches of the barn and that maybe if it would have taller wall heights, that would be an option for larger animals. Do you have any other types of suggestions like that? One of my thoughts is that this wall right here, this one's 8 feet, so this was 10 feet high, and then down here we're 6 feet high. If we brought it all up 2 feet, we'd have 8 feet and 10 feet to be able to get a larger animal in. But then also, if you did that, this is an 8-foot overhang, you could do a 10-foot one, and you'd still have probably about 7 feet, so you'd be able to get cows and stuff in there, so it'd be more, you could use this for a barn for larger animals. Now, we do have that larger 20 by 30, we also offer, offer that up to a 24 by 48, but that's a great suggestion, and something in between those sizes. Yep. It shows the 4x2 windows, so those are the 10 lights. Yeah, it looks nice, I like how we can have the, the awning style, so we can leave them open let the air flow for the animals. We don't have to worry about rain getting in. These are true divided lights, so each, there's 10 individual panes. The, the mullions go all the way through. There. Oh, they do? Yeah. Nice. Makes it nice and sturdy, I'm sure. We actually have a guy in New Hampshire that makes these. This is a New Hampshire made. Yeah. Really? That's <laughs> awesome. So, Al, your, your videos have been doing great. I've been watching your channel and learning all the names of the animals. And, yep. You know, I'd like to reward your, your, your dedicated viewers with a, an offer code. Awesome. We're, we're going to call it LUMNA2019. The LUMNA2019 offer code is good until December 31st, and that'll get you 10% off on any order. Uh, you can order on the phone or on the computer. Oh, that's, a, that's a huge savings, 10%. That's correct. When an average order is about $3,000, and this building here was probably closer to 10 to 15. Yeah. Yeah, so if you can take advantage of that before the end of this year, it would be a great uh, offer and a deal for, for anybody that and we'll give you free shipping on top of that. Can I use that promo code? Absolutely, yeah. Well, Absolutely. I've, been, I've been needing a woodshed, so I know I'm gonna be going inside and checking out your woodsheds. We need a woodshed here this year. You mean for like firewood? For firewood. How many yep. cords? We're gonna, we wanna hold about 10 cords of firewood. We, work, we burn about five to six cords a year. So I wanna be able to have two years worth of firewood stored and dried and we can rotate rotate it out. That's definitely wise. You definitely have experience in burning wood. You, you can always tell when somebody's they say, I want my wood dry, we got to rotate it. Oh yeah, it makes a big difference. Uh, now you're going to put that here on the property somewhere. I'm going to put it up by the house in an area that we go to get our firewood, but keep it so it's out by the edge of the driveway. So when I go to plow, I can plow right out in front of it and I won't have to shovel to get to my firewood anymore. And that sounds like you'll be ordering a kit. I will be ordering a kit. I love building. With the offer code of... With the offer code, we'll be saving 10%. <laughs> so thank you for that, Don. <laughs> Very welcome, Al. It's been a pleasure to come up here and meet with you in person and see the homestead. And uh, I'm very happy to, to be here. I'm glad you came up and I'm glad you stopped over. Thanks, Al. Thanks, Al. Well, we're going to finish squaring off our door now. But that was a good visit with Dom. Now I know what we're gonna be doing for a woodshed, which is gonna be nice. I don't gotta worry about that anymore. It's gonna be nice to be able to keep 10 cords of firewood under cover. All right, so 94. All right. Get all that sawdust off. So, boy, is it hot and humid today. Shoof. Perfect. 
Where is that other piece? Is it right here? It is. All right, let's get this one installed. Boom and boom. There we go. This side's rough lumber, so I want to make sure we got enough glue that will get a good adhesive contact. Now we just need to get our angles cut and cut some more. Let's see, what angle do we have here? It's not a 45. Let's figure out what we have for an angle. That should be our angle. Boom, perfect. I love it, guys, I love it. So that is, bum, bum, bum. 30, what do we have? 37 degrees, perfect. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's so nice. The reason I did a five degree back bevel on this edge and this edge is so when our boards are touching each other, the only pot that's really touching is the very tip. So if we gotta hit them together tight to get a nice smooth line, we have less of an area we have to make contact, if that makes sense. So our next piece is going to be twenty-eight and three quarters. Wow, it's gonna look so nice. All right, here we go. Oh, that's perfect. Good tap in there. I like that a lot. Glue here. little piece to glue up on this side. screws. Oh, it's gonna look so nice once we get it all done. Are you getting the pigs all some water? So here, grab one end. I can't get it over, I'll get much cuter. Don't touch my toes. Okay. I'll dump it over here and I'll give them a little mud wallow. Yeah, 
You want some water to cool off? Does that feel good, guys? Oh, I missed them both that time. You love it? You love me? I'm your friend now? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Girl, you all do that. Come on. You do that. I did it just for you. There you go. They're chops. Oh, we're starting to get some good tomatoes. My peppers are doing pretty good. They were getting yellow. They add some blood meal to it. It seems to be helping. My little peppers. Huh. They're all covered in mud. Yep. Staying cool. Hope, we need some more hay. Livies don't think you've eaten enough hay, Hope. Oh, She's not fat, I'm staying out. You girls need more hay. Livies say you belly your fat. Oh. Wow. Oh, so it's kind of going to be like, like you, like you have like barn doors, like, right, like instead of the like garage door? Yep. Can you reach it? <laughs> How many do you think today? You got one broken one. Looks like somebody stepped on it. It's all wrinkly too. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize it was a chicken. Sixteen. So one, two. Would have been 15. It was getting a little too hot for me. I had to take a quick little intermission. I shouldn't say quick little intermission. Took quite a bit of time off in the afternoon. Edited the video. Now we're going to get back to building the door. Dinner was good, guys. Dinner was good. Let's get this finished up now that it's starting to cool off. First rainstorm in the barn. Hear it? It's pretty loud. We definitely need to get it insulated in here to help with that noise. Old CWC stuck out in the rain. CWC, what are you doing? Hey? Who? Hey. Definitely a different look for a door, but I like it guys. It's kind of snazzy looking. It's gonna have a stripe going right through it. We have to wait till tomorrow to cut it down to size, flip it over and see what it looks like. So if you guys want to see that, you'll have to wait till the next video. Thanks for coming along on our journey with us guys. You're a huge blessing to us in our homestead and we'll see you right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency and freedom. Bye.